Hello, today I'm going to show you how to tie two systems together using the short tail SIP trunks. Now keep in mind that uh, this is usually going to be some third party system, whether it be a, another IPVBX or this even could be, uh, for instance, a fax server that needs those tie lines or in the short tail case, a mobility router. So let's just take a look at this. Let's say that we have um, users on two systems and we're trying to tie them in together. Um, so we have the first one, which is the main system that has users extensions 1000 and 1007. And you've got the other system that has an overlap or some of the users from the first system are moving over to the second system. So we can do one of two things. We're going to set up tie trunks between the two systems. Okay. So we're going to tie, do, so we're going to basically do SIP tie trunks between the two systems. And I'm going to show you on the short tail side. Now, if it's a third party system, uh, you'll have to get that information from the provider that supports that system but what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you uh, to create the tie trunks between the two okay first thing we want to do is we want to go into our trunk groups and in our trunk groups we're going to choose our site where the headquarters we're going to add SIP we're going to hit go okay and we're actually going to call this the SIP tie to other system okay um, we are going to make sure this says default tie trunk okay so that it's a tie trunk between the two. And all we really need to do is number of digits from CO. Because your system and the other system are going to be tied together like they're matching phone systems, I'm really going to take a look at you know, my notepad here and say that I have four digit extensions, 1000, 1007. So I'm going to say that the other system is going to send me four digits. Okay. And then what I can do here is drop this down. Now, if the other system is actually coming into the short tail system and it doesn't have trunks and it's going to use the short tail for trunking you're going to have to enable tandem trunking all that means is you're going to put a class of service let's say executives that's going to say that if someone is calling in from the other site i want to allow them access into my system then out of my system making a phone call okay if this is just a straight tie so you want a four digit dialing between the two we'll uncheck that the default destination for all trunk groups so this would be the operator some auto tenant menu um, although it's outbound, really it's a tie trunk. So we're really not using it to make any sort of outbound calls. We're just going to pass four digits between the two. So what we're going to do here is we're going to basically uncheck everything. And the only thing we're going to leave is caller ID not blocked by default. Because if we save it now, it'll actually allow outbound calling. If we uncheck this, I'm not sure it allows us to save it. Anyways, we'll continue on. Uh, so we use outbound calling, but again, we're not really using it out from outbound calling. Trunk did it, digit manipulation, we're not really too concerned with, um, because we're not actually making outbound calls. But what we are concerned with is the off system extensions down here. Okay. And this is where we're going to tell the system, the system is going to say, hey, anytime these extensions match, what are these off system extensions? Send the call across these tie trunks. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go back to my notes and say, oh, I need to create users 1007 to 1020 at the other location. So I'm going to go off system extensions, edit. So it wants me to save the trunk group first. Okay. Now, a couple things I forgot. Number one, access code. Even though you're not making outbound calls, I'm going to use a nine. And we'll do the local area code just to make them happy. And then I'm going to go back here and I'm going to hit save. Okay. Number one, it says click OK to give everybody access. We're just going to hit cancel. Uh, because they're off-system extensions, you really don't have to give permissions to use those trunks because uh, they're going to just match up with the off-system extensions. Now, I'm going to go down here into the off-system extension, hit edit, and it's going to ask me a range that I want to put in. I'm going to hit new. I'm going to say I want to go 1007 to 1000 and was it 20? 21. 20. Okay, 1020. Okay. Now what I can see is, hey, you can't do that because you got an overlap, okay? So it's telling me that 1007 is already in use. So short tail already recognized as a local, a local extension. So I can't use it. So what I'm going to do here is I can do one of two things. I'm going to go back in here and say, actually, let's go from 1008 to 1020. Hit OK. And so we don't have to save it. Everything is set up. So now, based on the off system extensions, Anytime somebody on the phone system will dial 1008 to 1020, it's going to try and send that call across those tie trunks. 
Now, this is just a trunk group. We haven't actually set it up for anything, but this is just the trunk group. So this is the, um, the basic configuration for that. Now, so we're creating the group that does that. So we've done a zip tie trunk to other systems. Now what we're going to want to do is we're going to actually create SIP trunks. So you have to have the allocation, you have to have the resources available to go into your into individual trunks. Okay, and I'm going to create them now. I'm going to say create a new trunk in Sunnyvale, and it's going to be in the SIP try to other system, SIP tie to other system, and I'm going to hit go. So it basically says there are no available ports. Do you want to create a short gear 40 switch? So now, since I don't have available ports, I have to do one of two things. Go back and make sure I do have available ports or uh, free up some ports and make them make them available for SIP tie trunks. And these are creating those tie trunks on the system, on, on the Shortel system. So I'm just going to hit cancel. Okay. And we're going to go to our platform hardware. We'll basically see here that we've got really actually a phone switch and that's it so we have no actually trunk switch anything that supply those trunks so we need that before we can start okay so i'm going to go to my primary switches and i'm going to deploy a short gear virtual trunk switch now keep in mind if you had a regular switch and that you had a um you know with some ports on it you could allocate that as sip trunks what i'm going to do here is i'm going to just call this uh virtual sip trunk switch and I'm going to download the switch image I'll just leave that for now stay on this page we're going to save the rest but I'm just going to call it 0.0. .0. let's call it 1.1.1.1 ethernet is going to be 0.0. 0, 0, 0 10 actually it's going to be 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. okay just to get it to you so I'll just use 0, 01 save okay so now it's deployed now I'm going to actually download the switch image all right and I'm going to save that I'm going to save that into let's save my shared drive all right and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my VM and I'm going to deploy this I'm going to browse and I go back in my share drive and there's the bare metal OVA file hit OK next 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 put on the free willy and we'll leave it on the same network adapter and we'll let this thing run all right, it's done. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my virtual switch, which is here, and I'm going to have my console, but I'm going to actually start it. So I'm going to open up the console and start. Now, I've already previously done um, a video on deploying the virtual SIP trunk switch. On here so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, pause this and we will get it up and functioning and we'll create some trunks on it and I'll be back in a minute okay so now I've been able to get the SIP trunk switch to fire up and a couple things I need to take from here is I need to take the MAC address and I need to take the IP address so I'm going to copy those over all right so we're going to call this Zero 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 C dash twenty nine dash A nine dash twenty four dash eight A put that in the right spot dash eight A and then I'm gonna call this should I just use DHCP so I'm gonna say ten dot ninety nine ten dot ninety nine dot zero dot two five one find it okay hit save and then I can be done with my virtual machine and now we're gonna go back into our primary hardware and you can see that I actually have a virtual SIP trunk switch so now I'm just gonna check my 
quick look. Okay, so wait for my virtual SIP to, to come up. So I'm going to probably just reboot that machine. But in the time being, I'm going to go into my platform hardware. And I'm going to configure, I got 50 SIP trunks here. So now I go into my SIP trunks, back to my individual trunks. I'm going to say create a new one here, hit go. It's not going to ask me to create a new SIP trunk because I have 50. And let's just call it two. Okay, and I'm going to go tie to other. Now, normally what I would do is say tie, you know, tie to, you know, PBX or tie to the, you know, location name and then the IP address. Now, this is the address of the termination of the SIP trunk. So this is what you're going to be pointing to. So this is going to be the SIP trunk um, address or it's going to be the IP address of the opposing SIP trunk that you're connecting to. So let's say that the other system was at 192.168.4.199. Four dot one ninety nine. One nine nine. Hit save. Okay, I don't have licenses, but that's okay. It's going to create two of those trunks based on that. So I go into my trunk groups. What you'll see is in my SIP tied trunk, I actually have two. Okay, so now that I've got two, and I get a system access code and everything's set up, and I've created those off system extensions. So we'll go back into the trunk group and we'll look at the off system extensions again. Down here, we had that problem with one thousand and seven. Okay, so right now, if I pick up and dial 1008 to 1020, it will send that call immediately over to the other system. Okay, but I do have a problem with 1007. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go back to my individual users. And who's 1007? Oh, this guy. Oh, it's me, Troublemaker. I don't want to, let's say that I'm doing this as a demo or I'm trialing some other equipment or some other, you know, system. But I really don't want to be taken off the system. So all I'm going to do here is I'm just going to say, you know, let's make Ken 8007, and let's go down here and mark him as numbers private, and he's not in the dial by name directory. Hit save. And what that does is that basically takes that 1007 out of the equation. But I haven't deleted the user. So if I need to add the user back in, I just change him back to this regular extension number. So now I go back to my trunk groups, go to my tie trunks, and go down to my off system extensions. I can do one of two things. I can add a new entry, or I can go and edit the existing entry. Okay, so I'm going to select the one that I want to edit, hit edit, and I'm going to change this from 1007 to 1008, hit OK. Boom, boom, and now it's good. So now I can do my testing. So now all I have to do is go to the other system that you're connected to and ensure that those calls are actually coming across. Okay, because from the short tail side, you're going to see those calls already configured. And as my last check, there's a couple things you want to do to make sure they're in service. So number one, um, if I go to my diagnostics and monitoring, which I know they're probably going to be offline because I actually don't have them running. Do my quick look here. Okay, go to Sunnyvale. Oh, my virtual SIP trunk is actually configured. Now, I chose the one, the 4.199 as just a made-up address, so it's really not connecting anywhere. But if I go into my diagnostics and monitoring, and I choose trunk groups, and then I look at my SIP trunk groups. Well, those are my alerts. So let's go into configuration. Those are just my alerts. Go to my status, trunk groups. And then go to my SIP trunks. You can see that the green actually shows that everything is connected on the short tail side. Now, it doesn't really tell you if the other side is connected or not. It basically just tells you that, you know, it's pointing to some address because remember that remote address it's just dumping stuff off to it doesn't need to get anything back it's not like it's a phone it's just a zip trunk so it could end up going to nowhere they don't care as long as it's configured so right here it's showing that it's in service which is good and the other thing I can do is I can bring up the trunk test tool if I don't already have this up okay and the trunk test tool what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna select, select on my head office continue and my virtual SIP trunk, or I can choose all of them, hit continue. And what you'll find here is now I can see actually my SIP trunks are configured. So if I'm doing any testing, I want to see any calls going across, I make that call and I can use the SIP trunk uh, to see if calls are going across. If they are going across, you're going to see traffic going across here. If you're getting a busy signal, 
that means it's going to the other system but being rejected. If you're not seeing any history here or any transaction here, it means it's not leaving your system. So check your permissions. Uh, but that is basically how you would set up SIP trunks to a third party or an off system. PBX, conference bridge, fax server, anything like that, or to your short demo system. Okay, and that's it. Enjoy.